Section 16.2, Bronsted Lowry Asses and Bases. So in the 1920s, uh, two guys, I don't even, they didn't work together. One was in Denmark and the other one was in England. And they both independently came up with some ideas that broadened Arrhenius' definition of assets and bases. If you remember, Arrhenius said that an acid is anything that would donate a hydrogen ion. And a base was anything that would produce hydroxide ions when you put it in water. So an acid would produce hyd um, hydrogen ion in water, and a base would produce hydroxide ions in water. That's all true, but it's not a wide enough definition because lots of stuff happens, acids and bases, wise, that do not involve hydroxides and don't even involve water. So that you needed a more comprehensive definition. So as they looked at it, they realized it wasn't just hydroxides, but there were other, it was anything that would accept a proton. And, and if you remember, a, a hydrogen ion is a proton. So they were together in that. But a proton, remember, is just a positive particle. It's, a, it's, an inside, the it's inside the nucleus uh, with no electrons on the outside and no neutrons. So it's just an individual proton. So if any time that you would donate a proton in any capacity, you're acting as an acid, even if you don't have something that looks like an acid. Okay, so Bronsted uh, Lowry, together, their work together, has a definition that's broader. Okay, so they say a substance that can transfer hydrogen ions or protons or can donate protons is an acid. And anything that can accept that proton is a base. Now, what happens is in order to donate a proton, you have to have an acceptor. You can't throw the ball onto the ground. You have to throw it to someone else. And if there's no one there to catch it, you can't be an acid. An acid is the ball thrower and a base is the ball catcher. Okay, so in the case of H being the ball, okay, if H is the ball, then Whatever it's attached to at the beginning is what's holding the ball, okay? We're going to see that that is going to be called the conjugate base. When the ball is gone, so let's say I've got a, I've got a ball here. That makes this an acid, okay, because I've got the hydrogen to give. Once I throw the ball and the, and the hydrogen's gone, whatever's left is called the conjugate base. It is the base that's left over when that when the proton is gone now it's also a base because i could catch that ball again that a ne negative remember it's just standing in for anything there's thousands of different acids so this a is just generic it since it can receive the ball back i mean it had the ball to start with so it could get get it back it is now a base so you have a proton donor that that's an acid then you once you throw the ball once you throw the uh, the hydrogen Whatever's left over is the is the conjugate base. Okay. Likewise, the base is anything that's going to accept the proton. And then once it's accepted the proton, it now has a ball to throw. So it's now the conjugate acid of that base. Okay. So conjugate acid base pairs are chemical species whose formula differ only by one hydrogen. So HA. What's left over? The hydrogen is positive. That means the A has to be negative. That's the conjugate base. B is the base. When I accept the hydrogen positive, it becomes BH+. Plus. It's, now the, it's now the conjugate acid. So here's a couple examples. So this is still generic. Okay, so I've got the white is the hydrogen. So I've got some kind of a holder of that hydrogen. That hydrogen connected to something, some molecule or some ion, doesn't matter. And so it is now able to throw the ball. Now, here's the idea. What is it more attracted to? Is it more attracted to what it's got? Or is it more attracted to something else? If it's more attracted to what it's got, it stays there. It doesn't move. If it's, uh, if it's more attracted to something else, then it's going to leave where it is and go to the, more, to the something else. Okay, so let's say that I've got an acid that, it, that is now in, wa in water. So here's H2O. Water has a lone pair. 
that lone pair, since there is no since there is no electron at all on the hydrogen, in order for it to form a bond, it has to share two electrons. So it's going to come along into into that lone pair, and since it has a lone pair, it can accept it. Okay, it's now an acceptor of that proton, and I can make a bond with it. Here's that lone pair. See, it had two lone pairs, one, two. It now only has one, and then the other lone pair is being used as a bond to form that other hydrogen. So this water is acting as a bronsted lowry base to, to attract or to hold that hydrogen, and now it is, this is called hydronium, okay? Hydronium is what you're studying when you're studying acid bases. When you have a pH, the H is for hydronium. So how much hydronium do you have in water? Well, what's happening is the, the acid, the hydrogen leaves whatever acid that you put in the water, that, oh, that one is transferred to the water, and now it's connected to the water. And the amount of hydronium ion you've got is how much acid that's in it. The acid is the hydrogen, but a hydrogen positive or hydrogen ion or a proton is essentially the same as the hydronium in water because you're never going to have it by itself. It's so reactive that it reacts with water. You're going to find that it doesn't just react with one water molecule. It can re react with many, many, many. You could have multiples. You could have uh, twos and fives and nines where you're going to have multiple waters att attracted um, to, that hydro or to that proton but let's just call it a hydronium. And then you're going to have a leftover, whatever whatever was left over, that's the, now the conjugate base of that acid. Okay, so here's the original acid. Here's the original base. That water is acting as a base. Now, once that transfer has happened, you now have its conjugate acid, the conjugate acid of the water, and then whatever was left over after the ball was thrown is the conjugate base of that acid. Okay, so you have generic acid and base going to a generic acid and base. But you have to realize if this is in a closed vessel, then you've got a reversible reaction. The acid plus water can yield hydronium plus the conjugate base, or that hydronium can break apart into water plus the other acid. So which way is it going to be? It can't be both, and it's not a guess you're actually going to have to conduct experiments to find out which one is more pull-offable in water than the other. Not every acid is going to pull off the hydrogen in water the same. So what you're going to see is that there are strengths of acids based upon how much it's holding on to its hydrogen. If it's holding on to its hydrogen very, very, very tight, and that hydrogen is very content to be there, it really doesn't act as an acid at all because an acid is something that gives away a hydrogen. But if that hydrogen never leaves, then you can't consider that an acid even though there's a hydrogen in that molecule. So if the base is more attractive to that hydrogen than where it already is, then it's more likely to travel, and if it's more likely to travel, this becomes a stronger acid. So a, uh, the strength of acid based, is based upon the base. How relatively strong is the acid to the base? How relatively strong is the base to the acid? If the base pulls more than the acid gives, or if the, if the, if the base pulls and the acid gives, if it pulls harder than what the acid is keeping, then it's going to travel. And you're going to have a you're going to have a strong acid because it's going to give it away more, and you're going to have a weak or a strong base because it's going to pull more. Well, in the other case, let's say you've got hydro, you've got um, ammonium, you've got an acid and base here. Well, if this hydronium is pulling on that stronger than that base is, then it's not going to travel. It's not going to it's not going to go from here to here. So it's, it's very unlikely that it's going to go left, but it's very likely that it's going to go right. So you're going to see that there is an, there's another K coming. There is another co constant of equilibrium based upon acid base. There's how acidic is it going to be? How, how likely is it to go away at the, to transfer or how likely is it to not transfer? That, that's, that's where we're going with this acid and base. So we're going to see that the stronger the acid and the stronger the base, 
will head, head towards a weaker acid and a weaker base. It, it, it will always go that way and only a little bit coming this way. So I'm using the word strong, and I know there's got to be someone who would think like, okay, strong means it can burn me more, or it can, you know, if you pour it on me, it'll, it'll melt my face off or something like that. Strong is not the same as corrosive. It, you can have a corrosive acid, but a strong acid simply means it's more likely to give away um, all of its hydrogens. Okay, the more likely it is to throw away its hydrogens, the stronger we're going to call it. A strong acid completely dissociates. Dissociates means break apart into ions. Okay, so so remember you've got H, you've got H plus attached to a negative A. Well, how likely is that H to go away? The more likely it is, the stronger the acid. Okay, so once you put it in water, okay, here we're putting it in some water, you're going to have none of this left. None of the original acid is going to be left because a strong acid completely dissociates into whatever it's left over, whatever its conjugate base is, plus the hydrogen that's attaching to the water and becoming hydronium. Okay, the extent of dissociation is nearly 100% when you have a strong acid. When you have a very weak acid, okay, and I would call a very weak acid a non-acid, <laughs> if it doesn't break apart, meaning it's holding on to its hydrogen so tight that it's very unlikely that hydrogen will go away, then if you were to put it in water, you're not going to have any hydronium because none of it went to the water. The water was was not as attractive to what it already had. Okay, it's not going to it's not going to to leave the something that is attracting it well to go to something that's not attracting it at all. Okay, so if you have no hydronium, then you're going to have no conjugate base, and so consequently, a very weak acid doesn't do anything. There's zero dissociation. A weak acid is going to break apart partially. So a weak acid is going to make um a little bit is breaking off, just a little bit, and so you're going to make a little bit of hydronium and have a little bit of conjugate base, and then you're going to have mostly um, molecule left. All right, so so a you're going to see that a strong acid compl goes to um, a, a strong acid will completely dissociate, and then its conjugate base is going to be very weak. A very weak acid is going to end up with a very strong conjugate base, and a weak acid is going to make a weak conjugate base. This should help a little bit if you study it. The strong acids, the very strong acids, are the ones that are most likely to throw it away, meaning that your, your base, um, the base is more pulley, okay? It's more attractive. So the so water, for instance, is more attractive than than these strong acids, and so they're going to go away. As you go from very weak acids here, so hydrogen just doesn't act like an acid. Even though there's a hydrogen there, it doesn't act like an acid. It does because hydrogen is attracted to itself stronger than the water would attract it. Okay, hydroxide that hydrogen is there but it's being pulled to that oxygen more than water would ever pull it, so it doesn't go anywhere. Ammonia, it would rather stay with the nitrogen than go off and join the oxygen, okay? But on the other side, nitrate, water is more attractive to that, nitri to that hydrogen than the nitrate um, ion is, and so the nitric acid is very strong, and you put it in water, it'll completely break apart. So you're going to have several of these, uh, this is perchlorate, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid. Um, I think there's five, six, or six or seven, I think, of them that you would memorize. Okay, the very, very weak ones um, are what? Ammonia. I'm, I, it's the only one I remember usually is ammonia. Okay, and then there is a graduation of of stronger, stronger, stronger. These are weak meaning that you're, when you put them in water, they're mostly going to stay as molecules with a little bit dissociating. And then exactly its opposite. So if you take its conjugate base, you're going to see it goes the other way. So the conjugate base of hydrogen is going to be H negative, and that's a very strong base. 
So the conjugate base of a weak, uh, a very weak acid is a strong base. The conjugate base of a very strong acid is a very weak base. Okay, because if it left me, it's not going to want to come back to me. It's the same idea. But a weak base, uh, a weak conjugate base of a weak acid is itself a weak base. That probably has to be studied and understood. Um, because it kind of wants to leave and it kind of wants to stay. So it somewhat stays and somewhat leaves. That means it's somewhat attractive. And so you're not going to end up with strong at all. So if you have a strong, uh, uh, a weak acid and it breaks apart, you're going to end up with a weak base also. Okay, so either way. Very quickly, I mentioned this before. Hydrogen is so reactive, okay? It is so reactive that it reacts with, that water pulls it so strongly that it doesn't just react with one water molecule. It could act with more than one water molecule, and you end up with some kind of a variation on hydronium. So hydronium is what you consider an acid, but these are also acids. This would be instead of instead of a one mole water molecule that's attaching to, it's three molecules that it's attaching to, or five molecules, or it's seven molecules that are somehow kind of collected around that that hydrogen and making some kind of a complex with it.